what I want you to do is keep these windows side by side so that you know the field that you're trying to create here on your left window and you have a reference to your recording on your right. Select the source field on your left and click on the new button here and the first field that you want to create in this structure is BUKRS which is the company code. So go type in BUKRS and then give a description of company code. How many characters can a company code be? It's four characters. It's not ten characters. So I'm going to type in four and click OK. But how do I know that the customer master's company code field is four characters? Well, you have to do a little trick there. So let me open another window and tell you how to identify what's the character length of a particular field in the recording. So let me open FD01 and click OK. In another window, again, place your cursor on the company code field and then hit F1, which is the help button. Okay. Then it will it will open this little pop-up and then click on the fourth button in the pop-up, which is the technical information button, the one that looks like a toolbox. Click on that, it'll open, and it will open another pop-up where you can see the field name and the data element. You can double click on either of this, either field name or data element. So I'm double clicking on BUKRS and it's going to open the data dictionary for BUKRS and it says that in this case it's of type character of length 4. Now most of the time you can use common sense to determine the length of the fields but in case you're not aware of the length of the fields this is the method that you would have to do. You'd have to only do it once right so I'm done with this and I'm closing this window. Coming back to the third step where we are creating the fields in the structure. The first field that I've created is BUKRS. It's a company code, character type, and length 4. So similarly, using this new button and having this recording handy, I'm going to create all the different fields in the structure that I want to use as inputs for this recording. All right, so once again, through the magic of editing, I've created all the different fields in the structure, and I'm going to save this guy. We are done with step number three. Now you can close this other window and maximize the first window. All right, we are in step number four. This is really a simple step. All you have to do is select that field, go into it, and, and assign the structure to the recording. So on the left, we have a recording, and on the right, we have the structure. So the source structure is being assigned to the recording. Now this is useful in case you have more than one structure that can be associated with a recording. One example of this is when you have, uh, when you want to tie in multiple partners, let's say for a soul to, you want to have the data for the soul to in one structure and the data for all the partners this is the customer data this is the partner data and for example this could be the tax classification data for different countries in such cases you could have the first structure represent this the second structure represent this, the third structure represent this, and they could all be assigned to a single recording called the soul. That's a more complicated scenario, but we don't want to really get there. We have only one simple structure here, which is the cust underscore fin structure, which has all the fields that we have identified as part of our customer master recording, and that's been assigned to this recording using these little arrows here. And you click on save go back. Go to the fifth step which is maintain field mappings and conversion rules. This is where we're going to map the fields in the structure to the actual hooks in the recording. So select that fifth step and click on execute and we have the structure here 
which is BUKRS K talk T blah 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 and click on up the change button and you have to select the source fields here now how do you select the source field this is actually the hooks of the recording that I was talking about these are all the different elements of the data that you've entered as part of the recording so I called them hooks there when I was doing the recording right so each of these hooks have to be mapped to fields in our structure so we have created a structure with a bunch of fields in the previous steps and each of these hooks in the recording has to be mapped to the respective field in the structure if you don't have a mental map of how they needs to be mapped this is where the names come to help you now all along if you remember either during the recording or during the creation of the structure I have stuck with a particular naming convention in this case whatever the technical name is so now it's easy to map I'll show you how easy it's going to be to map this recording hooks to the source structure so select any particular hook in the recording click on the change button and click on the source field and this is the structure with its corresponding source fields okay now you see the order is haphazard they're not really in order but it doesn't matter as long as you identify the right field so bookers BUKRS which is the company code is here so select that and click OK there you go the source structure has been mapped to the recording similarly you can select each of these fields go to the source field and select the corresponding field in the source structure which is KTOCT and click OK if there is a difference in the length between the source structure and the recording it gives you some warning saying hey the source field is long or source field is short or there is a character versus numeric so on and so forth you can go back and correct them if you want to delete a mapping just go select that field in the recording and then click on this button which will delete that rule or mapping this is the more cumbersome way of doing it but if you have your nomenclature right if you have identified all the fields properly there is a special way through which you can automatically map all these different fields without having to individually map these fields go to extras auto field mapping and it gives you a bunch of options so say no confirmation and click ok and it says auto field mapping complete click ok and there you go it has automatically done the field mapping for you how is it happening it does it based on the names so if it's bookers here and bookers here so it knows automatically to follow some kind of a fuzzy logic to map the right fields from between the source structure on the recording now you can as well go back and check it to make sure that it has done a good job for example sortel is that being mapped to the right field in the recording yes sortel versus sortel right so if you got your namings right lsnw can do the bulk of this mapping stuff automatically for you okay save it and go back believe it or not you're done with your lsmw design remember we said the first five steps is the design part we are done with the lsmw design for customer master mapping it's cool right all right and we said we are not going to do step number six it's not necessary now all right, the next series of steps of uh, seven or eight different steps is going to be not all that complicated. It's all about running the LSMW that we have designed in step number one through five.